Okay, hey guys, this is Doug DeNevue, 3D, the gentleman who did the lip syncing for na 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 $32,000. And what we, what year was this? 1987, I believe. 1987. That's a chunk of change right there. <laughs> All right. So what influenced you to do this performance? Oh, wow. All right. So there was a song called 19 by Paul Hardcastle. And Lip syncing was like really hot back then. I mean, everybody was doing it. Um, so we would do lip syncs to Wake Me Up Before You Go Go and Romantic, uh, you know, stuff like that. And so we played this song, 19, and people were just dancing and just dancing and dancing. I like, okay, well, started listening to the words. I'm thinking, I wonder if these people really know what this song is all about. They're just hearing a beat. So at that point, I started to think of doing a lip sync for it. So I had two movies back then. Vietnam movies were big back then. Apocalypse uh, Now, Happy Hamburger Hill, Platoon, Apocalypse Now, all of them. Um, but Full Metal Jacket um, <clears throat> was really impactful to me because basically it's a movie about programming soldiers to kill like machines. Tune was instrumental in the sense that when I wanted, I wanted to look like I had been, I had gone through hell, basically. And the scene where Charlie Sheen uh, arrives in the country and he sees that guy with the sunken eyes, they lock eyes. That was my inspiration for the makeup. So I put the makeup <clears throat> along with some robotics, and that's how I was inspired. Okay. Someone wants to know how you're doing. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'm doing just fine. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, I'm just here with my I'm chilling balloons and stuff like that. Hey, I'm all good. Someone wanted to know if you got that car, or the house, you know, whatever you can. The car, the house, whatever I can. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, I actually bought a truck. Nice what? Toyota pickup truck with the lift kit on it. It's beautiful. Is it a red truck? It's a red truck. <laughs> I remember the red truck. You do. Who are some of your favorites that you met or watched of the show? Um, on the show itself? Um, uh, you know, it's hard to remember anybody that, I mean, that, the, the Lionel Richie, Diana Ross guy that beat me in the, in the, like the super semi, but super, super final finals, whatever it was, um, he had a great act. I really liked him. He was a really nice guy. But, um, I don't really remember a lot of the, the, the acts back then and on the show. Uh, so Skip Banks, really him. Uh, Christopher, um, he did the Jackson 5. He had two dummies on either side of him that moved their arms and legs when they, he moved his. Uh, he was pretty Guy. All right. Well, kind of branching off that, have you met any celebrities while you while you did this? And who was oh yeah maybe Paul, your favorite that you? Uh, Paul Anka. I uh, met uh, the, 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 the uh, group the Grassroots. Uh, I met um, the Righteous Brothers. Oh, I like the Righteous Brothers. Yeah, Bill Medley. Um, he was really cool. Um, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Wow. And I think that's the biggest name that I've met. This is not a question, actually. I just thought of it right now. Okay. Um, did Paul Hardcastle reach out to you after, yes, he that, did. after that performance? He did, he did, he did, he did. Um, somebody who knew him 
saw, I can't remember her name, I think her name was Vanessa or something like that. Um, but she reached out to me, and you know, told, said to me, God, I've seen your act, and, and I know Paul, and I'm, I'm going to pass this on. And then, yeah, Paul, he's a busy guy, but he acknowledged me, he sent me, a, I think it was an email, um, just saying thank you, and all that kind of good stuff, so that was great. Cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you remember going to Phoenix to promote a lip syncing contest? Yes. I did on numerous occasions. Okay. Um, just, you know, just uh, a, lot of, a lot of traveling. Phoenix was just one of the many places that I went to. Um, nothing specifically about Phoenix that strikes me. Um, but, yeah, I, mean, I went there, Sacramento, um, Seattle, um, and I traveled, you know, basically the, the world. I went to, I traveled to Madrid. Doing my act, uh, uh, Santiago, Chile, uh, Canada, basically Vancouver. So, Is that right? When were you? Uh, when were you doing the performance? And how did you? Oh, when you were doing the performance, how did you feel about what happened over there? As in, I'm observing the referring to Vietnam. Oh, okay. So, well, obviously. You know, uh, it meant a lot to me. My, my father served in the Korean War, and so, um, you know, when people are just dancing to a tune and they're not really paying attention to the words, it, uh, that was what got my inspiration. But I, there are numerous occasions where I would walk in, I would do my act, and um, in fact, one competition I was in, the DJ actually had to leave the room. PTSD. Yeah. yeah. So, I have a longer version that you, know, you might want to know this. I had a seven minute version of what you saw putting on the hits. It was a lead in with a helicopter. And then uh, uh, Charlie Sheen's words in, in, in Platoon. Oh. Um, that I would, that I would lip sync as I was walking out to the stage without being a robot. And then I would hear explosions. This is all mixed together. And then 19 would start. Oh. So the, when I heard the explosions, I would like, uh, uh, like remembering, remembering yeah. bad things. Flashbacks. And then, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was my interpretation. That's that was my long act. That's awesome. Okay. Um, someone would like to know your name. My name? Yes, your name. And did you make a career out of that performance? Well, if you were watching the show, my name is Doug Denevue. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, what was the first the question? <laughs> did you make a career out of that performance? Uh, not a career, but uh, it was my job for two years. Uh, that and the spin-off act of the Human Jukebox. Which, if you were to go into um, 3D performance, Paul, Paul Hawkins was 19. You'll see me probably just below that doing the human jukebox. So if anybody's interested in seeing that, that's the spin-off I did after 19. Yeah. It was more commercial. Um, I did a lot more traveling and performing, and that made me actually a lot more money than the $32,000 I won on the show. Were you a fan of Paul Hardcastle before the song 19? No. Oh. No. I had never heard of him. Were you inspired by Kraftwerk? I love Kraftwerk, by the way. They're, uh, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, all I know is is that when I hear something and I interpret it in a certain way, you know, I, I don't have a lot of inspirations. I just kind of go off of what I, what I feel, the energy, how it should be directed, how I should make my movements. And just, I just, I don't know, it, it just came natural to me, I guess. Are you a real robot? No, I'm a cyborg. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> but, you know, the funny thing is, is that when I, um, the, the song, The Eagles, The New Kid in Town. Yes. When I first moved to Los Angeles from Sacramento to do this act, I started on um, the Putting on the Hits audition. I was at Tony Romas in North Hollywood. And I walked in with my makeup and my, my fatigues and, and people were just like looking at me like, oh, what the? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you have to understand, when, when I got there, 
it was people just doing the, you know, I'm just gonna pretend I'm singing the song and I'll play me play the guitar and you know it was just a you know straightforward just lip sync. When I showed up, nobody had ever seen anything like that. They were like, I had a little girl after the show come up and ask me for my my autograph. It was like, whoa, that was pretty cool. Obviously, I got on the show, passed the audition. But I would go, then these guys would come up to me and say, oh my God, I got a lip sync show, I got a talent show. I'm gonna see my, come to my show, come perform at my show, come perform at my show. Got to the point after a while that I would walk in the room and people would look at, look at me and go, oh man, why are you here? <laughs> I made money every night making, doing contests. That's, that was my job, that's how I earned a living. That's how, you know, I was supporting you when you were a baby. And you were doing this before I was born. That's how you yeah. met my mom, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Someone would like for you to go on Cameo, and Cameo is where you send personal messages, etc. Would you be interested, or would you think you might do that? I could, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Joanne is the name of the YouTuber. You don't know her. Hi, Joanne. <laughs> Uh, wants, I don't know you. <laughs> wants to know if she can get an autographed picture of you. Sure. If I can find a picture, I'll autograph it for you. Um, I used to have headshots of you. I yeah, think they're in storage. Yeah. I don't know if I have extra. Everything's <laughs> digital now, so... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did you do your own makeup? Okay, what's the first syllable of my first name? Duh. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on how you oh, learned yeah, how to yeah, do yeah, that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'm a theater arts major. I graduated from Sacramento, Sacramento State University. A uh, little, little uh, fun fact, that's where Tom Hanks graduated from college. Oh, Thank I you know. very much. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, he graduated a few years before I got there. Um, so I studied with the same uh, professors that he did. Um, but theater arts major, uh, I took makeup, theatrical makeup, um, so... That's where I learned how to do all the, the makeup. So, yes, I did the makeup by myself. Okay. Did you know that you would have such an impact on veterans with this performance? Yes, like I said before. Um, you know, doing the show and the guy having to walk out. I mean, that, but... Um, well, when you, I, when you initially made the performance, when you built the sketch... We just ran out of power. No, it's still recording. Just the phone got is too hot. Okay. You're too hot. To, well... Well, of course. <laughs> it's still recording. Oh, I, okay. I know that. Really? Yes, oh. really. <laughs> when you were making the sketch, did you think that this was something that would have an impact on veterans? I, you know what? I had hoped that <clears throat> that it would bring more attention to what they went through because Vietnam anybody who's old enough to remember was the popular war. That any war is popular, but Vietnam was not a very popular war. Um, so it was kind of my tribute to them. And I, I have had some um, veterans come up to me and thank me. Absolutely. Okay. Um, how did you feel once you saw your impact? My impact. Your impact on people uh, what, with your performances, the people who were veterans that had PTSD or the people who, uh, you know, might have talked to you about, I mean, that's just the question. I'm just kind of, I don't know, winging it, I'm assuming. Oh. Well, again. <laughs> it's not hot anymore. Go ahead. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not hot anymore? Uh, okay. Anyway, so I, I pretty much already answered that question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um, did 19 open up any more acts for you? The human jukebox. The human jukebox. Yes, the human jukebox. So again, if you want to go to YouTube and type in 3D performs all of Castles 19, you'll probably see me as the human jukebox. Basically, what what was the idea behind that was 19 was a very popular, very iconic type of performance uh, in the day. Uh, but it wasn't commercial. So my manager at the time said, you know, you need something more upbeat, more fun. 
or entertaining, something where people are going to laugh, have fun with it. So my friend Christopher, the one I was referring to earlier, uh, did the Jackson 5. Uh, he had a studio apartment with a studio in it in Studio City. Thank you very much. <laughs> Trifecta. Um, so he basically mixed the songs, all the songs together. Uh, and I just basically did the same kind of robotic thing, but it was more fun. And did different characters like Stevie Wonder, Ruth Franklin, Jerry Lee Lewis, Alice, uh, James Brown. All right, last question. What is your what is your favorite memory with your favorite child? I'm sorry. Your favorite memory with your favorite child. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I thought you said this was going to be a difficult interview. Um, with me. With, with you. <laughs> Oh, your favorite child. Your favorite, you know, my favorite thing about you is just trying to still, or still trying to figure out who your real mother is. Oh Lord! Oh no! Um, <laughs> no, it's a joke. Um, <laughs> just you know, the times that we drove together when you know I was picking you up, mom and dad were divorced, so we would spend time driving back and forth to and from. We just had a lot of fun driving. I think that was a lot of quality time. Yeah, listening to good music, yeah. like the cars, and, hey, Dad, who is this? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but who? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for doing this interview, Dad. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Say hello to the YouTube peoples. Hello, YouTube peoples. <laughs> Peace out. All right.